Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining my workshop. I'm Lara Olsen, and I'm the academic coach at UWSB. I help students with anything study skills related, so whether that is time management, note taking, test taking, but also stress management, um, you know, anything that helps you with being successful in your classes, connecting you with resources. So that's what I do. And uh, today I will talk about, um, so I titled this workshop 14 days to exam success. And I'm going to introduce a concept to you. Um, and unfortunately I don't have that little book with me because it's in the library and the library is closed. <laughs> but I'm gonna talk about this concept that I found really helpful. Um, and I'm gonna share it with you. So, but before I jump, uh, oh, and then I'm also going to talk a little bit about uh, some tips for math and science tests. Um, but before I do that, I'd like to introduce some of the services that we in the TLC offer. Um, and even now, so that everything is, right now everything is online, we offer pretty much all of the services um, still online. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I will um, kind of walk you through the TLC homepage here. So when you um, go to the UWSP website and you um, put in TLC in the search bar, this is what comes up. And um, so those are all the like the big areas and I'm just going to dive in a little bit and show you what we offer. So the first one here is math and science. And I'm just going to show you how this works. Uh, we have three options, one on one tutoring, group tutoring and drop in tutoring. And I'm just going to stay here with the drop in tutoring. It's completely flexible. Um, it's free and by the way right now everything is free which is so awesome so you should really take advantage of it so um, if you click on the um, drop-in schedule then you have to sign in and it just looks like it um, did and once you decide okay well tomorrow at 11 I'm gonna do bio I'm gonna um, look for tutoring for bio 100 then you can just click on Rachel and then automatically you would be directed to a Zoom meeting. Just like uh, you are for this workshop. Um, and same is for group tutoring and for one-on-one -on -one tutoring. So this is really uh, sweet, you know, because usually one-on-one -on -one tutoring is not completely free. Um, it's, it's inexpensive, but still it's not completely free now it is and so you just fill out all your information and then you choose times where you have no other commitments so this is pretty sweet we can do it all paperless um, you can always write me email an email if you have more questions i can always point you into the right direction and um, then let's talk about um, technology tutoring so we offer tutoring and anything technology related um, and you can, as whether it is like coding or even, you know, Zoom, Canvas, whatever it is, or Excel, you can request tutoring via an online platform here. So that's really nice. Um, let me go back. There are also tech tutoring workshops. So if you want to take some time on your own, browse a little bit. Um, let me go on world languages, same thing. So you would request one-on-one -on -one tutoring um, and then you would fill out information and we will connect you with a tutor. So, and the writing lab is something that I wanna talk about. Mm, so, because we do different things in the writing lab, we do tutoring um, for anything that is, um, you know, for example, humanities related, if you need a tutoring in history or sociology, you make an appointment um, here. Um, or you need just help with a paper, 
um, for example, um, and you would write the due date of your paper and then the paper will be reviewed by writing lab consultant and you, it, it may uh, take 24 to 48 hours to review your paper, so you should plan ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then of course, I do wanna talk about study skills because that is what I do. Um, so if you want to take, to do academic coaching with me, you will just email me. Um, or I also have posted a whole bunch of resources. So if it's, let's say, about online learning or about test prep and test taking, I have resources here for you. Um, and now I can't go back here. I don't know why. Oh, also what I do is um, I am a certified yoga teacher. And every day I, from Monday through Wednesday, I offer mindful moments and I upload them here. So those are five to 15, either yoga or meditation or breathing um, techniques that I'm sharing. Yeah, so there's a whole lot going on on our website. I think I'm just gonna stop the share. And um, are there any questions so far? No. Okay, great. Well, then I'm going to um, start my presentation here. No, I wanted to do from a different slide. Well, and I, I want to talk with you a little bit about um, what kind, what kind of worries you have about finals, and then maybe also what your study strategies are. So, if you're watching this video, maybe you just want to pause it at this point and just reflect a little bit about worries and strategies. So, but Taylor, what it is, what is it for you? Um, that are worries and strategies? Um, mainly that I just don't have enough time to finish my life exams. Mm -hmm. Especially with them being like online this semester. Do you mean um, like you have during the exam or now at this point that you have not, not enough time to um, prepare or to study like during the exam because once you like start the exams you only have so much time to finish them mm -hmm. so i'm mainly like concerned that i'm gonna panic and then not get anything done during the exam mm -hmm. we can talk a little bit about test anxiety as well um because you know that can definitely happen because these exams like you say are timed that you're taking yeah online yeah they usually are um okay are there any other worries um not that i can think of right now okay can you already so and i think you are in a, a great workshop here then today because um the strategy that i'll share with you will prep you really really well and the best prepared you can be, the better you will handle, you know, time constraints. So it's really the being, being as prepared as you can um, stepping into the exam. Do you have other, do, so what do you do right now to prepare for exams? What are some things? Um, I make sure that I know when all of like my deadlines for like homework and stuff is due so that I can mm -hmm. make sure I'm staying on top of like uh, the coursework. Mm -hmm. And then I also make sure to keep up with like all of the notes and stuff and presentations and Zoom lessons that my professors are having. 
-hmm. Anything else that you're doing right now for study strategies? Um, besides like reviewing my notes every now and then, that's about it right now. Okay. Well, those are already great things. So I will talk about keeping deadlines and I will also um, talk about how to actually use your notes. And I'm going to um, stop share here. And now I wonder if this is going to be, oh yeah, this is, oh. Okay, um, I'm going to share this uh, document with you right now um, that you can open. I'm gonna email it to you. If you're watching this video, um, you can just uh, open this document that is on the website. <clears throat> that is called 14 Days to Exam Success. Um, second. Okay, so you should have it in your email right now. You should have a link. And I'm gonna send you another one um, that we'll use later that is uh, called Reduced Test Anxiety. Let me know once you get it. Okay. Um. I got it. I'm just working on getting it open. Awesome. And you can just, and you don't, actually you don't uh, need it right now. This okay. is just for your uh, reference. Yep. Okay, I have it then. Awesome. Because I'm um, basically, I'm, um, hold on a second. I'm walking you through the, um, through the paper that I sent you. So okay. um, Lucinda Becker is, um, this writer who came up with the system. I really like it and I want to share it with you and, and hopefully this is going to be helpful for you. Okay. Um, so uh, this is organized in, of course, 14 days. It's called 14 days to exam success, but it's actually 13 days. Day 14 is your exam day. Um, and so here's the suggestion on day one, um, first thing would be to look through sample exam papers or online practice tests for your course, just to kind of gather. This is the gathering day. You will, yeah, you will just kind of collect what you have. Then make sure that you are clear about the division of marks between coursework and exams. What is, what are the points? What's the percentage? You want to be, um, economical with your uh, resources, right? And that's ma mainly your time. So if your final is only worth 10%, you, you might still, of course, want to study, but you might not want to invest as much time into a final that is worth 85%, sure. Um, you want to check and double check the exam timetable, make sure you put reminders in your phone, dates in your planner, etc. It's very, very important. Um, and then, and so this is kind of like the first step of the system, divide your material into eight sections. Um, and I'll tell you what to do now with these eight sections. And you'll see what kind of the rhythm is. Because on day two, um, the idea is to reduce the material in your first section by working through it at a reasonably fast pace and making revision notes. So you take, like you talked about, right? That's very important for you to gather, to have your notes, that's awesome. And now you want to make it, um, you, you wanna condense it already. And you call that revision notes because you always have your notes for reference, all right? They're always there, but you wanna keep it nice and condensed in your revision notes. Um, and you want to also make sure that you only look up the minimum amount of information. Um, because if you, you know, if you already know stuff and you don't have to study it anymore, why put it in your revision notes, like really detailed? It's not necessary. Okay. 
only look where you didn't understand anything. Um, and you just have to dig a little bit deeper. All right. And then you take a break. Breaks are very important. I talk about this in my workshops all the time. I also talk about it in my one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, what I usually recommend is working for 50 or studying for 50 minutes and then taking a 10 minute break uh, in, in that 10, in those 10 minutes. Um, what are some things that you do in breaks, Taylor? Um, usually just like check social media and stuff and mm -hmm. hang out with friends, especially if I'm like in my dorm. Mm -hmm. And that is all right. I mean, yeah, you, you need, I, I think it's very important these days to stay connected with your friends and your family. Um, so I think that's very important. You can write a message to a friend and so kind of check in and it's okay to check your Instagram too. I, I love, don't get me wrong. I love my Instagram, but, uh, I also strongly encourage, um, in, so in those breaks to, uh, get outside, um, walk around the block, or you don't even have to walk around the block, just um, walk in your backyard. And, you know, especially right now, it's so beautiful. Everything is popping up just to stretch a little bit, doing a little bit of physical activity, um, whether it's doing a little bit of yoga or whatever it is that you enjoy is something that I recommend. Or doing like a mindless productive activity, um, if you have to do some laundry, just do something like that, that kind of makes you feel like at the end of the day, oh man, I did all of this. And then at the same time, I also kind of tidied up a little bit. That can feel very productive. Um, yeah, but find something for you that is, that uh, makes you feel good. Mm. And that a reason why I, oftentimes say be a little bit careful with social media is that 10 minutes can easily turn into 15 or 20 right yep yeah and that's you know it's that's normal because it's bottomless uh we can just scroll scroll and scroll and i certainly experience that all the time so um i'm not saying don't use it but maybe limit it okay doc Let's move on to day three. And now you take your revision notes um, that are already condensed of section one and you reduce those to revision cards. So it depends on what resources you have right now, whether it's paper, if you can get some flashcards at this point, I would really, really recommend it, you know, kind of like this, this size. Um, yeah, and be, Bold only include essentials on these revision cards because you have your revision notes that you can always fall back to. You have your other notes. Yeah. The revision cards are, you know, kind of like, uh, hmm, like the very important condensed detail, the very important information. And then on that day, you reduce section two of your material to revision notes. Is that clear? Yeah. So basically, revision, no, notes turn it into revision notes. And then the next day, you take those notes and turn them into revision cards. And you take a new section and turn that into yeah. revision notes. <clears throat> and so, surprise, on day four, <laughs> you reduce your revision notes with section two of your material to, re to revision cards. And the reason why you want to start by creating revision cards is that you are already reviewing the material from the day before, right? Yeah. So you always start with the revision cards, making those, and then reducing the material of section three to revision notes. Day five, same thing, all right? And now day six is when um, things change a little bit. Um, it still starts with reducing the notes to revision cards, reducing section five to revision notes. And now you already start on day six to work with your revision cards. It says here reducing your pile. 
do you work with um, note cards or flashcards? Yeah. By reducing the pile, does that mean like um, taking out the ones then that you like already know from yeah. like reducing it? Yep, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you, you know, you really only have to focus on the stuff that you, you know, still have to uh, store in your memory or that you still have to understand or you still have to make connections and um, dig a little deeper. Mm -hmm. And then um, this next one, uh, Lucinda calls it uh, begin working on essay plans even if most of your exams are not essay type exams. Um, to me, this means you find other ways to interact with your notes and that is super important. I talk a lot about um, recall versus recognition. Um, do you know what the difference is between recall and recognition, Taylor? Uh, can you repeat that? Yes. And I don't have that on the slide here. I'm definitely gonna um, improve that for my next rounds. The difference between recall and recognition. Oh, um, would that be like when like you hear a question and like you can think of like like the recognition part of like knowing that you're supposed to know it, but then recalling is actually like being able to like answer the question yeah uh so i just want to kind of write that here on our whiteboard um recognition versus recall so you, can you kind of can you say it again and just um kind of uh clarify so recognition is that when like like if you see a question, you like, you can kind of like, obviously like recognize like what you're supposed to be putting, but then recall is like actually knowing the answer and like being able to completely answer it properly. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of, exactly, there's a lot of good stuff that you're saying. And, and for the first part you say, when you see the question, just like, aha, yeah, yeah. I uh, recognize this. The problem is, that you might not be able to um, come up with the answer. And that is the recognition part is you, um, you recognize, oops, you recognize material, you know, like content um, from your notes, you recognize material from, or better maybe in your notes, right? When you go through your notes or even maybe your note cards, you read them and you like, aha, that makes sense. All right, that is recognition. Okay. And recall means, and that's exactly what you said. You're actually able to remember. Um, yeah, and to, um, to retrieve information. And also maybe connected with other information. I'm going a little bit further here, but I think it, it'll get clear in a second when I come back to my uh, PowerPoint presentation, right? It's um, like, for example, and I, I'm not gonna do this exercise now because it's not a workshop on recall versus recognition, but when you see the Starbucks label, you'll be ident able to identify the Starbucks label. I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. If I tell you, draw the Starbucks label, uh, logo, not label, logo. If you're watching right now, I am challenging you to stop this video and try to draw the Starbucks logo. And you'll realize it's not that easy. And the reason is that you've seen it a million times but why can you not recall it, Taylor? Like what, what's the reason why it would be hard? It's probably hard to draw it. Uh, cause probably because we've never been asked to recall, like draw it before. Yes. So that would be one reason I would think. 
yeah, you never drew it, okay? You never actually did it. Uh, you, you were never actively interacting with this logo. I always call it to interact. That's what I, I tell to people I coach. You need to interact with your material, not just take it in, not just read it. And there are all kinds of ways to interact. Like for example, um, signing up for tutoring is one, one way to interact, right? Because then you have a different person that you can discuss with. Um, but if we go back now, I'm gonna stop this share and I'm gonna go back to my PowerPoint. If we go back now to what Lucinda calls the essay plans. It could be also like a mind map. It could be you, you, you bring information into a different visualization or you take different, um, like different parts that are in different chapters of what you learn in your textbook or your, the lecture and you compare it, you evaluate it. Um, we call these like higher level thinking skills because you're not just on the memorizing level that's um it's usually not enough at the college level at college you are asked to evaluate you're asked to judge to discuss all of these things and that's why this is an important step on day six you're finding ways to make connections and to interact more deeply with the material does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yes. What are some things that you have done to interact with your material? Um, for like my anatomy class, like drawing out like the diagrams and then labeling it and then just like mm -hmm. printing out different diagrams and like labeling them and like study groups. Great. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay, now I'm going to go on the next, oh yeah, day seven, rest, rest and rest. So if you start early enough, and this is such a nice way how it's spaced out, um, and I really, you know, uh, encourage you to try this. And it can be that you do a variation of it, you know, you could like, let's say you have less time, then don't divide it into eight sections, but maybe into seven or six, uh, seven or six sections. Why not? You know, as long as you don't cram before the exam. All right, day eight, we'll start again to reduce revision notes for section five uh, to revision cards and to reduce uh, section six to revision notes. You keep working on your revision cards. You keep going with some essay plans, you know, or other ways to interact uh, with your material. Um, yeah, and begin working on past papers or sample assessments. So basically, constantly quizzing yourself. I feel like you can already do that before. So you don't have to be like super duper strict with this. You can kind of make it a little bit your own. And again, reducing to cards and then to notes. Um, so this is basically a um, same as day eight. And on day 10, same old, same old, and then give yourself a mock exam. I don't know whether you do that on day 10 or day nine. I think the earlier, the better, but at some time uh, you should give yourself a mock exam. Uh, and on day 11, so if you're noticing now is that um, reduce your revision notes for section eight. This is the last section to revision cards. Um, so this is the last section that you've reduced and then tidy up and stop for the day. And now you have two more days left. So you make a final check on your revision cards, focusing on especially those that you made yesterday. Keep working with your revision cards. Um, and then the last point, that's a, uh, a really important one and a really powerful one is the last minute card or several, but keep it as minimal. I think one card would be perfect 
for each section of your material. Um, last minute cards are cards that you will use before the exam. So um, basically kind of like a, I should have looked up the word. I'm from Germany, by the way. Sometimes I um, forget vocabulary, but basically like a little cheat thing that you would put in your pocket. I'm not saying, uh, I mean, I'm not saying you should cheat and look on this cheat thing. But by the, uh, by the way, are you going to have open book exams? Probably. Um, some of my classes will and some of them won't. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, but anyhow, whether this is online or like a, a real test, um, it's not something I want you to take out in the exam and, you know, get in trouble. Uh, it's more of a like super condensed information like that you can quickly look at before the exam and then put it in your bag. Now, of course, with the online format, um, you can probably, you can leave it there. I mean, whatever you need to do. And um, especially for the open book exams, the thing is that, have you ever had an open book exam? Uh, yeah, for some of like the ones that I had normally online, they would allow to be open book, but they'd make like the time shorter. So then we wouldn't have enough time to obviously like look up every answer. Exactly. So that's kind of the pitfall that um, students can step into. They think, oh, it's open book, easy peasy. Uh, I don't really have to prepare uh, and then you will run out of time. So what you said, you are worried that you won't have enough time. If you keep cool these next two weeks and you're just constantly reducing, reviewing and doing that, you know, you uh, can make sure that you are, you're really prepared. Being over prepared is the best way you can go. Okay, and then this is the last day before the exam. Double check what time uh, your exam is, where it is. Okay, it's online. <laughs> um, but make sure that you have all the, the links and what you need. Keep looking at your revision cards to brush up. Practice openings and endings for exam answers. Um, have some high energy snacks. So, I mean, it's really, really important to be fueled. Um, when you have exams, it's important to sleep enough. Um, so rather than cramming, um, get a good night's sleep. And you, you won't have to cram if you have done this. I mean, there's just no need. And it's, uh, it's just not an effective way of studying. And um, especially, like, it, it will especially aggravate test, test anxiety if you've crammed because... That means you didn't have, didn't give yourself enough time to prepare. Um, plan to take a night off uh, if you can. Get your, um, maybe go outside, go for a bike ride, uh, watch a movie, do something fun. Um, yeah, power of sleep. I already talked about that. Uh, and then the day of, of the exam, um, and I have a few more tips um, beyond this. Of course, is eating something very, very, it's very, very important to eat, uh, even if it's just banana or something or some nuts, um, because your brain needs fuel. And then here, uh, this is now for like in-person exams to say, aim to get to the exam room no more than 30 minutes before uh, the exam. Um, what what it means for you when you take them online, you want to make sure that you your computer is running, your internet connection is working, everything is working. And if you log on five minutes before, then you'll just get, you know, stressed out. So it might be a good idea to, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes before or even 15 minutes before to check everything out. 20 minutes I think would be better and yeah make sure you have everything in place and if you need reassurance check over your last minute card for the exam and it should just give you security and reassurance that you did everything uh, that you could to prepare yeah so um, 
Do you have any questions about this? Um, so it says like aim to get to the exam room no more than 30 minutes before the exam. Is there any like downfall to like getting there like before 30 minutes? Yeah, I mean, and, and those are like kind of, I mean, everybody uh, works a little bit differently, but yeah, so if you go, I mean, hopefully soon we'll get back to normal and you'll take normal tests. If you get there 30 minutes earlier, what are you going to do? Or let's say you get there 40 minutes earlier. What are you going to do? Uh, well, probably uh, start getting in my head a little bit, I guess, about the exam. But I, I usually get there super early to just, like, keep going over, like, the note cards and, like, making sure it's in there and that I'm in the right place. But I'm just a really paranoid person in general. <laughs> and if that works for you, you know what? I mean, you have to know yourself, honestly, and what, what works for you. I think 30 minutes is a great kind of like maybe general guideline. Also, what can be really distracting uh, are your other classmates. I don't know if you've experienced that, but I, I have coached people who um, get nervous uh, by the fact that there are other people in the room. Um, and there might be other students with you. Again, this doesn't apply right now to the situation, but in general, there might be other students in the room who are not as well prepared. And it's like, oh, oh God, have you read this about uh, blah, 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 blah? And then maybe you're like, oh my God, I didn't study this. And then, uh, you, and then you might get uh, anxious, stuff like that. That um, last, to get to the room last minute is not recommended, but to be there too early and to get all worked up is not a good thing. Unless yeah, you know, I, if you if you can keep cool and go through your note cards, all power to you. Yeah, I have noticed that like if I do get there early and start talking with some of the other people in the class, I'll be like, Oh, do you know like about this and did you read about that? And then I'll start panicking because I, know. I don't know it. Or maybe it's in like a different context than how I studied it. Mm -hmm. But like I get really freaked out about that too. Yes. I would avoid that. I sometimes say, be a hermit. It might be on one of the handouts that I sent to you. I'm not 100% sure, but be a little bit of a hermit um, on the day of the exam. And also after the exam, like, um, I think there's nothing worse than after the exam, everybody being like, oh my God, oh my God, like, what do you say for question two? And just work, get worked up together. Um, I, I think it's much better to be done with the exam, to walk away from it and do, okay, I did the best I could and done. Yeah. After the exam, I don't know. I feel like I always kind of just like not blackout, but like all of a sudden just like wipe every question from my brain just so I don't think about it. And so people will be like, oh, what did you get for number two? And then I'm like, I don't even know what number two was. I couldn't tell you what the last problem was. Uh-huh. And what's the point, right? What is the point at, at that point in time? There is, there is no point. Um, it's, it would be much better to be in study groups beforehand, right? And be social before, like days leading up to the exam. You know, that is so much better to just keep you cool. Um, yeah, and prepare together, discuss. But after the exam, um, especially right after. I think it's good to just walk away and to treat yourself a little bit. Like when you're home, I would, I don't know, what are some ways that you treat yourself? Um, well, I mean, it depends on like where I am. Like usually mm -hmm. uh, I like go for a walk or go hammocking or something, especially mm -hmm. if it's like last year after the spring uh, exams. I went to like the river at Iverson and like jumped off the bridge there and stuff like that. Nice. So I don't really know what I'm going to do now that they're all online, but maybe watch a movie. You could still go outside. Um, the weather will just get nicer. And I've certainly seen people on hammocks and I've been outside this weekend. So yeah, definitely, you know, make some coffee, go outside, treat yourself a little bit. Very important. Okay. 
Um, we have a little bit of time left, Taylor, and I'm going to leave it up to you. Like, what would you like to talk about um, first? Because I don't know if we're going to get to everything. Is it more test anxiety or is it some tips for science and math tests? Um, is it okay to go over like test anxiety? Well, yeah, of course. And I want to, let me see, I'm going to just go back. And I think a lot of the stuff will actually, um, you know, I already talked about it a little bit, but um, there are a few new tips. Because one of the things, okay, I have to, stop. there we go. Yeah. Yeah, this picture already creates anxiety in me. <laughs> When I see this. Oh. Um, one of the things is uh, I'm gonna stay there. Um, the oftentimes people who experience uh, severe test anxiety, they will avoid um, preparing for exams. Why? Because even interacting with the material or studying will get them in the headspace in this negative, anxious headspace, if that makes sense. So really finding ways to prepare. And I feel like if, if you are like, um, if you experience a lot of test anxiety, I would recommend making an appointment with me. I would recommend getting as much help as you can with tutors. I would recommend, um, you know, finding study groups, anything that you can do uh, just so that you have a support system that helps a lot. And then preparing, preparing, preparing. Um, okay, go to class, take notes, review your notes, create flashcards. Um, maybe some of us will say, well, duh. And yet, you know, it's, it's sometimes not that easy. We like our um our mind is so powerful in avoiding negative emotions um that being afraid of tests can keep us from going to class yeah study often don't cram and study over small periods of time so that's called distributed practice and that is basically the um, opposite of cramming um and that's exactly, you know, that's what Lucinda, like this 14 day program, which she came up with, I think gives just a really practical tool. Because if I just say, well, just study often, sometimes you might not even know where to start. Quizzing yourself, I already said that. Um, yeah, I wanna talk about relaxation techniques. So I can only recommend, um, Going on my uh, website, the, um, the study skills portion of the TLC and going to the mindful moments um, because there I do teach meditation, I do teach breathing techniques, something I'm very passionate about. So I love sharing that. I can also recommend apps. I really love the app Headspace. I'm gonna um, write it in the, can I write this in the chat? That doesn't work right now. Well. Headspace. I don't know if you've heard of it. Have you heard of it, Taylor? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. It's a really cool app uh, and the beginning is free. So yeah, I mean, I've never paid for it. I've only ever used the introductory um, meditations and those are so awesome because they're really straightforward um, and practical. And they're not very spiritual and they are not hard and yet they will teach you just a solid technique to meditate and it is scientifically proven that if you meditate on a regular basis uh, and that can just mean just five minutes all right doesn't mean you have to sit quietly in the middle of the forest for an hour and <laughs> sit there in a cross-legged position um it's not what meditation is just really a few minutes of finding focus it's proven that Doing that regularly, you can actually change your brain uh, into a 
um, a state where there's less anxiety, more focus, more calm. But it takes a little bit of practice, but it would be a perfect time to start now. Um, 14 days before, or maybe 13 days, it depends on when your first final is. But, um, and with these, and if you do this, he'll talk about it. I don't know what his name is, but he has a beautiful, he has such a calming voice. Um, so I love his meditations, but yeah, he'll talk about it. Like finding a day of the time uh, that is convenient for you, where you can be undisturbed. Oftentimes, right when you get up or maybe before bedtime. So routines, routines, routines. Um, and breathing techniques uh, are great. So, I mean, it's uh, no coincidence that oftentimes you say, well, just, you know, if you get upset about something, well, take a deep breath. And that's, you know, these breathing techniques. Um, and when we focus, oh, let me, let me circle back. The thing with anxiety, and that's actually what you mentioned too, uh, we can get in our head, right? Maybe when, when we arrive too early, um, in the classroom where the test is. Maybe that's not true for you, but maybe for somebody else, we might get in our head and that causes anxiety, you know, like the, the negativity. Oh God, maybe I'm not prepared. Oh gosh, did I read chapter on da 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 da? All of these things. At this point, it really doesn't matter anymore. And working with our breath can be a, such a powerful tool to get grounded, to anchor yourself. Uh, and if we have time, we can do a little bit of a breathing technique. Um, I, th I think I'm just going to do it right now. Because um, it's really nice and simple. And I want to do a, a shout out to Josh Wecker. He taught this one to me, or he taught the term to me. I never really had a name for it. But so just sit comfortably. You don't have to change a whole lot. You can lean back. You can just sit very relaxed and then close your eyes. And now take, first take a deep breath in through your nose, deep into your belly and breathe out. And now breathe in, counting to four in your mind. So breathe in, two, three, four, then hold your breath, two, three, four, breathe out, two, three, four, pause, two, three, four, breathe in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, breathe out, two, three, four, pause, two, three, one more round, breathe in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, breathe out, two, three, four, and pause, two, three, four. Now take a deep breath in and breathe out. And you can open your eyes again. And by focusing on counting, you're focusing your mind on that. You cannot think about anything else, really. Or if you do, you can just gently bring your attention back to the counting. And plus, the breathing, when you breathe in deeply, you hold your breath keep the oxygen spread. So physically your body and your brain, which is important, especially when we're talking about test taking here, your brain gets more oxygen. So it's actually a really good thing to do um, before taking a test. And, you know, you can do that anywhere, anytime. Um, day of the exam. What other tips do I have for you? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Limit your caffeine intake. Uh, because um, I have read and I've also experienced that, that high caffeine intake can mimic high anxiety. How so? You can get kind of the shakes or your heart 
beats uh, faster, you start sweating. I don't know if you've experienced that. Are you a big coffee drinker? Uh, yeah, I've definitely like experienced it, especially going into certain exams. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't necessarily cut it out because that, that might not be a good idea uh, to do on a test taking day. Um, you know, if, if you regularly drink coffee, uh, I think now is not the time to completely stop, but, uh, but to limit it, maybe drink a cup and you're good to go. Get in a ha happy mood. Um, studies show that students who felt better and more optimistic, they were more likely to see a test as a challenge and they, um, and not as an obstacle and they performed better at the test. So, I mean, that again proves the thing of meditation. I mean, it's just another way of proving how important the mind is and however you can get in a happy mood, whether it's an, inform um, an affirmation, like I can do this, and even just thinking or even writing it um, can help, you know, or something like writing about a challenge that you have risen to. Anything that helps to get you into a positive mindset. During the test, monitor your time. Mm -hmm. So let's say you write an essay. I always recommend to brainstorm for five minutes. Not start writing right away. Uh, but brainstorming, writing a really short, really mess. I mean, it doesn't have to be pretty, right? But just a little outline and then start writing and giving yourself um, at least five minutes in the end to look over it. And I think that's true for every test to give yourself a little bit of time in the end. Uh, if you take a multiple choice test, by the way, there is another um, workshop that I published on my academic coaching site that talks about tests too, but it's about multiple choice tests that we didn't cover in this class. But just when I said, give yourself some time in the end to look over the things. Don't change every answer in a multiple choice test. That's usually not a good idea unless, you know, you have this one answer and you were not sure and you're really convinced and you've thought about it and it's like, okay, this now is the right answer. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but the last minute panicky changing yeah. it. That, I do not recommend that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Asking questions, um, professors, do not want you to sit there and panic if you have a question about an answer. If you, oh, if you have, no, if you have a question about a question, <laughs> um, we want you to ask so you can feel calm and confident. Remember that nobody is perfect. Um, I don't know um, if you have perfectionist tendencies or if you who are watching this video have perfectionist tendencies. Um, it's okay to, you know, if you had to take a multiple choice test and you have a few answers that you're not sure about, that's okay. You're just human, all right? You did what you could and you're doing your best now. That's just human. And we already talked about that, but I really want to show the picture because I love this picture. Um, after the test, just move on just like this kitty is doing. And um, to end this, it's a fact that moderate anxiety maximizes performance. It's normal uh, and it's, we, we kind of want a little bit of that, you know, adrenaline going. Actors want that before they go on stage because then they won't forget their lines or athletes want that. Um, you know, and that's the same thing with you. You want to have a little bit of adrenaline so your brain can really tap into like all the resources to um, have the best possible performance on that day. Okay. Um, and that's it about test anxiety. Do you have any more questions or um, comments? Uh, no, I think you covered. Okay. Paranoid about. Okay, well, um, I'm going to stop the recording now. So thanks for watching this video and um, 
Good luck with your finals. You can do this.